Oscar De La Hoya said that Errol Spence is one-dimensional in uh, the lead-up to this Crawford and Spence fight. Now, Oscar has a previous history with Errol Spence. They were together. Uh, Spence was signed to Golden Boy Promotions at one point, I believe, with Wilder, Broner, a bunch of the other guys that eventually had gone to PBC when they left Golden Boy. So maybe that's some of the reason why. I know that Oscar also was in talks with Terrence Crawford about possibly doing something with Golden Boy. So I get that that might be some of the reason why he's saying some of this stuff. But let's just forget about that and let's just look at what he said. He said Arrow Spence is one-dimensional. He is one mode. He puts his head down. Aggression, pressure, pressure fighting. Now, many people that are defending Spence will say, what do you mean? How is he one-dimensional? He outboxed Mikey Garcia. He outboxed Danny Garcia. And obviously, he's shown he could, you know, really bang and brawl and stay, you know, in there and stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I think that Errol Spence, maybe one-dimensional is not the right terminology, and maybe that's too harsh. But I do understand what Oscar De La Hoya means, and I do agree with him, and here's why. Yes, versus Mikey Garcia, versus Danny Garcia, he can outbox them. Because Mikey Garcia is a much smaller guy. And Danny Garcia is a much slower guy. So yeah, he could outbox them. But is he this master boxer? No, he's not. Is he able to, you know, get in and out and use his hand and foot speed to win rounds? Not really. Not versus the elite of the division. And when he's fought the elite of the division, with the exception of Danny Garcia, and you can make a case that at that point, Danny Garcia already kind of had like one foot out the door because he was coming off of, you know, losing to... Uh, Porter and Thurman not too early on before that, even though the one with Porter was like really tight and he did beat uh, Red Cash in between, you know, the fight before uh, the Spence fight, that was like a tuna fight. But when he fought Kel Brook, he wasn't able to outbox him. He had to go and do what Errol Spence does. Stay down, punch, hit him to the body, hit him to the head, be the bigger, stronger man in there. And, you know, use his attrition to win the fight. When he fought Porter, he couldn't outbox Porter. He couldn't keep Porter off of him. What did he do? He was losing the fight. He stood in there, landed some big shots, dropped Porter around 11, I think it was. Around 10. I forgot what round it was exactly. I think it was 11. And won the fight. When he fought Ugas, he can't outbox a guy like that. A guy with skills like that. A Cuban guy with that kind of background with skills like that. And it's not like he could, you know, move around the ring and just land one big shot and time him, you know, Terrence Crawford style. He had to use his work rate and his physicality and his aggression to break him down. So when he fought Brooke, Porter, and Ugas, which are probably the three best fighters that he's fought, considering where they were at the time that he fought them, he had to win the same way. You know, when he fought Lamont Peterson, he won that way. Most of his wins are in that fashion. I do understand what Oscar means. He is more limited than other top fighters. He does have a set style. I almost compare it to like Triple G. It's similar. You know, Triple G, uh, he wants to sit there and, 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 and hurt you and bang with you. He's not going to move around the ring. He's not going to try to outbox you. You know, he, he he's not going to, you know, throw one counter at a time. You know, and what they do, a very good job of Triple G and Errol Spence is they simplify the fight. They're very good with the fundamentals. As Derek James always preaches, Abel Sanchez, when he was training, Triple G always preaches. They're great at the fundamentals. They got great jabs, great lead hands. Uh, I think Golovkin has more power than Spence, but Spence can go to the body more, he's more on the inside. Uh, I think that, you know, they're trying to do the same thing. They're trying to break down their man and hurt their man. They don't overcomplicate stuff, and that's why they have success. But I understand why um, by, uh, Oscar De La Hoya would look at it and say, you know what, in comparison to Crawford, or even in comparison to Oscar himself, Spence is kind of one-dimensional because he does look to do the same thing over and over again versus top-tier opponents. Uh, I know he could outbox lower-tier opponents uh, who are slower or smaller and throw one punch at a time like Danny Garcia, but versus the guys who are the elite of the division... He can't really do that. Now, I almost compare it to Deontay Wilder. He outboxed Berman Stavern. And Wilder can outbox lower tier fighters. But he couldn't outbox Fury. He couldn't outbox Luis Ortiz. He couldn't. So when he fought the top guys that he fought, Wilder, Ortiz, and Fury, 
he had to resort to what he does best, landing one right hand and trying to win that way. So I understand what Oscar De La Hoya says. One dimensional might be a little bit harsh because he's shown different dimensions in fights. But overall, I agree with the sentiment that Oscar De La Hoya is saying that Earl Spence, generally speaking, versus top level, does have one mode. Doesn't mean he's not a great fighter. A lot of great fighters have had that, you know, Manny Pacquiao, he, he basically was one-dimensional. He had one mode and won a lot of fights. Uh, Mike Tyson was one-dimensional. He won a lot of fights. Uh, I don't remember any fight where Mike Tyson or Manny Pacquiao went into it, and then in the middle of the fight, they said, you know what, I'm going to change my fight plan, and I'm going to do this, 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 and this, and they won the fight that way. And I don't think Spence has ever done that either. If he has, let me know. So I, I don't think any fight of Errol Spence's career where he – I can't think of any fight in Errol Spence's career where he came into the fight with one plan and then he's like, you know what? I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to, you know, do this, this, and this, and we're going to win the fight. Let me know what you guys think. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Check my other videos out. Peace.